The functional gait assessment is an outcome measure that is designed to measure challenges to gait outside of traditional measures that focus either on balance or steady state gait. The test encompasses 10 separate tasks that objectively measure an individual's ability to perform various functional tasks in gait. This video will show you how to set up the functional gait assessment, perform the test with examples of normal performance, and discuss how a patient's score can be used in a clinical setting. The first thing to do is to find a 20-foot distance, or about 6 meters, to perform the test. Measure the 20-foot distance and place a marker at each end. Next, measure a 12-inch, or 1-foot width, along the walkway. You can use markers on the ground, such as tape, or use two markers at each end to visualize a 12-inch wide walkway. If your setting has tiled floors, many tiles are 12 inches wide. It can be an easy method to measure the walkway. Other equipment you will need include a stopwatch, two shoe boxes, and stairs, preferably with at least four steps and rails on both sides. Tape the shoe boxes together, creating an approximately 9 inch obstacle. The following 10 tasks will be presented with normal performance. When performing the functional gait assessment in your setting, use a copy of the functional gait assessment tool to refer to descriptions for each level of performance. As you explain the tasks, be sure to demonstrate performance to the patient to ensure understanding and proper technique. Task 1. Gait Level Surface Instruct the patient to walk the 20-foot test distance, saying, Walk at your normal speed from here to the next mark. Using a stopwatch, measure the time that the patient requires to walk the 20-foot distance, and score as indicated. Task 2. Change in Gait Speed Instruct the patient, saying, Begin walking at your normal pace. When I tell you to walk fast, walk as fast as you can. When I tell you to walk slow, walk as slowly as you can. Have the patient walk at each speed for about five feet before changing speeds. Task three, gait with horizontal head turns. Instruct the patient saying, Walk from here to the next mark. 20 feet away. Begin walking at your normal pace. Keep walking straight. After three steps, turn your head to the right and keep walking straight while looking to the right. After three more steps, turn your head to the left and keep walking straight while looking to the left. Continue alternating looking right and left every three steps until you have completed two repetitions in each direction. Alternatively, you can cue the patient to turn their head while you count their steps. Look right. Look left. Look right. Look left. Task 4. Gait with vertical head turns. Instruct the patient, saying, Walk from here to the next mark, 20 feet away. Begin walking at your normal pace. Keep walking straight. After three steps, tip your head up and keep walking straight while looking up. After three more steps, tip your head down and keep walking straight while looking down. Continue alternating looking up and looking down until you have completed two repetitions in each direction. As with the horizontal head turns, you can cue the patient to turn their head while you count their steps. Look down, look up, look down. Task five, gate and pivot turn. Instruct the patient, saying, Begin with walking at your normal pace. When I tell you to turn and stop, turn as quickly as you can and face the opposite direction and stop. Using a stopwatch, start timing as soon as the patient begins to turn and stop once they have completed the turn. Turn and stop. Task six. Step over obstacle. Prepare the walkway by placing your 9 inch shoebox obstacle near the middle of the walkway. Instruct the patient, saying, Begin walking at your normal speed. 
When you come to the shoe box, step over it, not around it, and keep walking. If the patient is unable to step over the obstacle, perform the task a second time using one shoe box as an obstacle and score as indicated. Once complete, remove the obstacle from the walkway. Task seven, gate with narrow base of support. Instruct the patient saying, walk on the floor with arms folded across the chest and feet aligned heel to toe. The number of steps taken in a straight line are counted for a maximum of 10 steps. Score as indicated. Note that this task can be performed in parallel bars if needed, but is best when performed in your walkway. Task 8. Gait with eyes closed. Instruct the patient, saying, Walk at your normal speed from here to the next mark with your eyes closed. Using a stopwatch, measure the time that the patient requires to walk the 20-foot distance and score as indicated. It is important that you guide the patient to avoid obstacles, to stop at the appropriate time, and to guard in case of a loss of balance. Task 9. Ambulating Backwards Instruct the patient, saying, Walk backwards until I tell you to stop. Have the patient walk the distance of the walkway and score as indicated. Task 10. Steps. Instruct the patient, saying, Walk up these stairs as you would at home, using the rail if necessary. At the top, turn around and walk down. Score as indicated. Once you have completed all 10 tasks, add up the scores for each task. Perfect performance of the functional gait assessment would yield a score of 30. The sum that you receive is expressed as the score out of 30. For example, 19 out of 30. When used with current clinical statistics, such as those found on missiongate.org, you can use the functional gait assessment score for effective patient education, outcome measurement, and determination of fall risk. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope you can bring this great tool into your clinic. If you want to learn more about this test, including current statistics, MissionGate has a free functional gait assessment toolkit available on missiongate.org. It includes a ready-to-go end service, clinical statistics, and more. If you want to see more of MissionGate on YouTube, click the link in the corner to subscribe or visit our YouTube channel for more content.